Hello everybody, welcome back to Reading for Vocabulary. I'm Brian Stewart. Well, we're continuing on our theme of robots. And have you ever wondered about where robots came from? Well, in this lesson, we're going to find out because we're going to talk about early robots. We're going to learn about the history of robots. Where did robots come from? What kind of robots were the first robots? Well, let's take a look at a picture first, and we can see a lot of different examples of early robots. You know, the first robots that came out, right? It looks like this machine, this is all the robot? Yes, because it all controlled this little robot bird up here on the top, right? Look at how ugly that is and all that machinery just for this tiny little robot at the top, right? And of course, robots have been famous in uh, storybooks and cartoon books uh, like this here. Uh, there's been different types of robots, of course, early robots used in factories for lifting things up, uh, different, did, did different things. I'm not really sure what this is. Now, this is not a robot. This is a person. <laughs> It's a person, an astronaut on the moon. But the, the people who went to the moon, the astronauts on the moon in the 1960s, used robots to help them get around on the moon and also to help them guide their spacecraft and build the spacecraft to the moon. Without robots, people would not have been able to go to the moon. Here we can see some early robot legs, right? A uh, little robot play dogs. I think this is called Aibo, right? The little Japanese uh, robot dogs uh, that were very popular uh, a few years ago. And of course, maybe you have one of these in your home. This is an example of a robot vacuum cleaner that goes around and cleans up the, um, the dust and the dirt in your home. Okay, so these are all examples of early robots. This is not so early, but it's, it's still kind of a simple robot. So these pictures all show different stages in the history of robots. Okay, we have our first word here, and it looks like she's having fun, right? She's going around and around. She's to turn around on a center. And what is she on, by the way? She's on a merry go round. She's on a merry-go-round. That's what we call this uh, play toy at a playground. It's a merry-go-round. And what is she doing? The merry-go-round just turns around on a center. So what is it doing? It is rotating to just turn around and around and there's a center, right? So you have the center and you're turning around on the center. You're just rotating to rotate around. The earth rotates around on its center, right? So um, to rotate is just to turn around and around like on a merry-go-round. Actually, when you think about it, on the earth, we're all on a very big merry-go-round, aren't we? But we don't feel it. <laughs> okay, next one. Uh, the foot of an animal. Oh, this is kind of cute, right? Do you have a dog, right? Sometimes you can say, okay, hello, hello, and the dog will shake hands with you. It's a trick, right? So when you do that, you take the dog's what? The foot of an animal. We, we don't really call it a foot. There's a special word for it for animals, not for people, but for animals, we call it a paw, a paw. Dogs have a paw. Bears have a paw. Lions have a paw, but be careful of the lion's paw. They're very dangerous, right? But dog's paws are cute, right? You can hold them and say, hello, doggy, right? Uh, you can train your dog to shake hands or shake paws. Okay, next one. Oh, who's this guy? Uh, he looks, maybe you don't know who he is. <laughs> okay, it's getting a, a little bit old now. But uh, he is imitating a famous speaker. He is imitating Elvis Presley. If you don't know who that is, ask your mom or dad. They'll know. He's a famous singer, a Amer famous American singer, Elvis Presley. Uh, uh, he's a very deep voice, like, <laughs> you know, he sings kind of like that, okay? But uh, Elvis Presley, to imitate, what's another word for that? To mimic. To mimic is to copy or imitate somebody. Imitate also means to copy. But a copy is like, you know, if you're going to copy something, you copy a book on a, a machine. But if you're going to behave or dress or act, in the same way as somebody else, it's better to use mimic instead of copy. 
right? If you mimic somebody, mimic is specifically for a person who is copying the actions or behavior of another person. That is mimic. So when you copy or behave the actions of another person, you are imitating them, okay? You are mimicking them, to mimic somebody. Okay, <clears throat> next one. A wheel with teeth. So these are wheels, right? But they have teeth. Not teeth that are going to bite you, right? But teeth that catch onto other teeth and turn them around. And these things, like you turn this one, it will turn that one, and it will turn that one. And you can find these things in many machines. This is how many machines are able to do work with these gears, with a gear. In fact, in your car, you have different gears, different speeds. On your bicycle, you have different gears, right? You can change the gear on a fancy bicycle. So if you're going up a hill or down a hill, you can change the gear to go faster or to have more power when you pedal it. So gears are very important for many different machines. They're just basically wheels with teeth on them. Okay, to lift something up. To lift something up, what are they doing? They are raising. So to raise uh, parts of a, a building, to help them build that building, they are raising something. To lift something up, you raise something. What do you raise every day in school? You raise your hand. I hope you raise your hand. You should raise your hand in class. Ask your teacher questions if you don't know the answer. Raise your hand. Lift it up. Okay? A bird with a heavy body and short legs. You see these birds everywhere, especially in the city, right? They're going around, boop, 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 and they, and they get the, the bread or they get the little things from the uh, uh, ground, and they go, coo, coo, right? What are they? They are pigeons pigeons, but they're kind of dirty birds, right? Don't touch them. You know, maybe you can throw them food, but you know, don't chase them. Don't try to touch them because that, that's not good for your health, actually. But these are called pigeons. And unfortunately, they go hua jung shil everywhere, right? They go to the bathroom all over the place and it's little white uh, places on the ground. So they are pigeons. Hopefully they don't fly over you. Oh, no, that's terrible, right? But pigeons are everywhere. Okay. What in the world is this guy doing? Important and respected, the word is impressive. Now, maybe that's up to your opinion. <laughs> okay, if I look at this guy, I don't think impressive. I think silly or foolish, okay? But let's say there's an important politician or uh, an important person gives a speech. Let's say we're talking about, like, for example, Martin Luther King. Do you know who that is? Martin Luther King was a very important uh, leader in American uh, history, in the civil rights movement. He was a, a black preacher who spoke for uh, equal rights for black people and white people. In fact, people of all races and all ages and all sexes. And he was a very impressive speaker. He was important. Many people respected him. He was impressive. Okay? Uh, usually some politicians are impressive. Unfortunately, not all politicians are impressive. Actors can be impressive. If you, wow, that, that person really is a good actor, then you respect that person. They are impressive. Okay? If you're an artist, maybe you think that's impressive. Other people might think it's kind of silly. But, you know, it's a matter of opinion, really. Okay, so impressive is important and respected. Next one. Of the present time. Of the present time, in this case, they're talking about the style. The style is a reflection, or it shows the present time. It is modern style. Of course, you know, you can talk about old-fashioned style. When you go into houses or buildings, you look at the, the decorations. You can say, oh, this is old-fashioned, or some of them, they might look very modern, very clean, very simple, uh, modern style. 
okay? So modern. It just means of the present time. But modern doesn't just mean, be careful, it doesn't just mean the decoration on the inside of a building. It can also mean the way that people are thinking. Oh, that's modern thinking. Or it's modern behavior. Or it's a modern machinery. Or it's a modern movie. So modern just means of the present time. It's an adjective used to describe many different things. Next one, a type of tall plant with white or colored flowers. And it looks like this. Do you know what type of flower this is? This flower is called a lily. Lily. My wife, her favorite flower is the purple lily. So I have to remember that. Otherwise, I get in trouble if I forget, right? But anyway, lily is a very beautiful and uh, impressive flower. So you could say, wow, uh, a lily can be an impressive flower because it's very beautiful. Okay. A person who makes and repairs, oops, that's a little mistake there. We'll just check that out. A person who makes and repairs clocks. So this person, uh, when they're uh, making a clock or they're repairing a clock, we call them a clock maker. That's very simple, right? Uh, makes clocks, clock maker. How simple is that? We're just putting two words together to make one word. Clock maker. Clock maker. You can also say watch maker. People who make watches. Be careful. Oh, that's, that's a good thing. This is not a clock. Do not say that this is a clock. This is not a clock. That's Konglish, okay? This is a watch, okay? So watch. A clock is on the wall, right? If you have a, a clock on the wall, that's a clock. This is a watch. Don't say I have a clock on my wrist. What? That's a big clock on your wrist? That's very heavy. It's very strange. How do you put on your shirt? <laughs> it's crazy, right? So don't put a clock on your wrist. Put a watch on your wrist. But we can say watch maker or clock maker. Kind of the same thing. They do the same things, really. And they can probably do both, right? So you can say he's a clock maker or he's a watch maker. Okay, so clock maker or watch maker. But remember the difference between clock and watch. They're not the same. Okay. Whoa, what happened here? This guy looks very, uh, what is, he looks very surprised. Something that is not expected is surprising. Now, be careful here. Do not say he is surprising. That's not right. He is sur oops, sorry, surprised, right? Be careful. He is not surprising. Don't use ing to describe him. Use ed to describe him. He is surprised. The message. The message is surprising, okay? So we use surprising to describe the thing that makes him surprised, okay? And we do that with all sorts of adjectives like that. For example, let's take another one, a boring. Do you say, I am boring? No, I say the book is boring. It makes me bored. I am bored. The book that I'm reading, well, it's boring. So if I read a book, it's boring. It makes me bored. Don't say he is boring or I am boring because if you do that, what you're saying is that I am boring. I make other people bored, <laughs> right? Don't say I am boring, right? Uh, say I am bored, okay? He is surprised, not surprising. He is surprised because the message is surprising, okay? So the thing that makes somebody uh, feel a certain way is ing. The person's reaction is ed. It's a good way to remember, okay? The person's reaction is ed. The thing that causes that is ing, okay? Causes ing, reaction is ed, okay? So boring, bored. Surprising, surprised. Confusing, confused. Please don't make a mistake on those. That's a very common mistake. Okay, the next word here is unusual. So something may have pushed this boy down, but it's something unusual means it's not common, not ordinary, not, it's some, maybe something that's not usual, that doesn't normally happen. So another word for unusual is strange. But it's interesting to note that strange may be a little bit of a negative uh, 
word. When we say unusual, it doesn't mean negative or positive. It's just unusual. It's just not ordinary. But strange has a little bit of a negative meaning. So if you say, if you say that's strange, you may have a little bit of a negative meaning to it. But strange just means unusual, not normal. If you say, hmm, a strange force pushed the boy down, it's not an ordinary force. It's not a usual thing. Okay, so let's move on. Where your ribs and heart are. Of course, some of you guys might do that. Do you play soccer, right? You can bounce it off your what? Off your chest, right? That's fine. You cannot bounce it off your arms, but in soccer, you can hit the ball, or football, you can hit the ball with your legs, of course, with your chest, or with your head, but no hands. Only the goalie can use his hands, but usually you cannot use it. So he's using his chest to hit the ball. It's where his ribs, right, and his heart, boom, 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 are located. Where your ribs and your heart are located, that's your chest. Okay. Made of wood. If we say something is made of wood, we can just say one word to describe it as an adjective. That adjective is wooden. Wooden. This is a wooden chair. Maybe your desk at home is wooden. It's made of wood. Okay, next one. Information sent from one person to another. So what is information that is sent from one person to another? And think about this. Sometimes I call somebody, they're not there. But I talk to somebody, maybe their friend or their secretary or their mother. What do I tell that person? I give that person a message. Can I give him a message? Give, whoops, give someone a message. S-O means someone. Uh, give someone a message. Give someone a message. That's a common uh, expression. Also, can I take a message? Can I take a message? So, let's review what we should say. I'm calling somebody. I'm calling my friend. My friend's not home. His mother is at home. So I talk to his mother, Mrs. Brown. Hi, Mrs. Brown. Is James there? I'm sorry, James isn't here. And Mrs. Brown can say, can I take a message? So she's going to take a message from me. I say, yes, I would like to give a message. I'm going to give James a message. Please meet me after school, right? So I can give James a message. Mrs. Brown will take a message. She'll write it down. Then she'll give the message to James later. So we can say give a message, take a message. Very common expression. Message. Information sent from one person to another. Okay, next one. Oh, she looks like Katie Holmes, doesn't she? Doesn't she look like Tom Cruise's former wife? Yeah. Uh, maybe that's from a movie. Okay, feeling happy. She's feeling happy. She's got a lot of money in her hands, right? So she can go buy something that she wants. She is pleased. Pleased. Uh, she is pleased. She's not pleasing. <laughs> She's pleased. That's her reaction to the money. So this is another example, right? It is pleasing to have a lot of money. The money is pleasing to her, she is pleased. She is feeling happy, she is pleased. Remember, ED is the reaction. Her reaction to the money, she is pleased. Not, she is pleasing, no. The money is pleasing, she is pleased. Okay. Now, let's go over, let's review the vocabulary here, as usual. In this case, we must choose the word that best completes the sentence. So we have a lot of sentences here. We need to choose the word from the box that best fits in the blanks in these sentences. Let's review the words here very quickly. Here, first one is rotates, rotates. Second one, paw, paw. Next one, mimic, mimic. Then raise, raise. Then we have pigeon, pigeon. Then modern, modern. Then impressive, impressive. Then gears, gears. Okay, those are the words. Let's see how they fit into the sentences. Number one, 
The doctor removed the thorns from the dog's what? By the way, what are thorns? Thorns are on a plant, right? Sometimes plants have like sharp needles on them. And if you brush up against them, those thorns will go into your skin. Ouch, right? And dogs, you know dogs, they're running around, they're having fun, they're smelling everything. And so they're messing around in the plants and the thorns might get in their what, right? Dogs will walk on what? What, what are dogs feet and hands. What word do we use for those? Well, of course, we use paw. The doctor removed the thorns from the dog's paw. The dog was, you know, running around and got thorns in its paw. So that's the word that we use. Two, there are many beep in a clock. There are many what in a clock? We talked about this. It's a wheel with teeth. And like I said, these are very important for many machines. They help those machines work and move other things. I use the example of your bicycle. On your bicycle, you have the chain that goes around one of these wheel with teeth. And in fancy bicycles, you can change the position, right, to get more power or to get more speed. What is that thing? They are, of course, gears. And there are many gears, you have to use S, because many gears in a clock. And if you look inside the clock, there are many gears that make the hands move and tell the time. And remember, this is a watch, not a clock, okay? Actually, I don't know if there are any gears in here. Some watches, like this one, are a little bit modern, right? They're electronic, so it's all electronic. There are no gears, uh, but many clocks have uh, mechanical gears that work uh, and they move the hands on the clock. There are many gears in a clock. Okay, number three. The boy couldn't beep his arms because he was sick. So in this case, think about this. If, if a boy is sick, he can't do what with his arms? His arms are going to stay here. It's going to be hard for him to lift. What's another word for lift? What's another word for lift here? Another word is raise. The boy couldn't raise his arms because he was sick. Okay, next one, number four. In beep society, people live longer. So this is comparison, right? Because we're saying longer. Longer than what? Well, if we think about it, in society nowadays, these days, don't say in these days, just say these days. These days, people live longer than before, than traditional society. What's the opposite of traditional? It would be modern, in modern society. Remember I said we can use modern to describe many different things, not just the decorations inside a building, but also the way people think, our lifestyles, our society, in modern society, people live longer than they did before. Okay, next one, number five. People can use a beep to send messages through the air. Now, we didn't talk about this, but I, I, when, I, when I described this word, I said you see them everywhere, right? And I said they're kind of dirty, don't touch them, right? But I also said be careful because they go to the bathroom all over the place. But, but by the way, they are also used a long time ago. People would tie messages to their feet and release them, and they would fly from one place to another. What kind of animal does that? Of course, we're talking about pigeons. People can use a pigeon to send messages through the air. And a long time ago, people did use uh, pigeons. You know, before telephones, before the telegraph, uh, the best way to send a message was with a pigeon, right? Release the pigeon, and the pigeons were trained. They knew where their homes were, so they would go to their home. You know, take them away from the home, release them, they would go back to their home, and people would catch them. Oh, there's a message, and they would read the message. Six. The earth beep around the sun. Now, I talked about this before when I was talking about a merry-go-round, and I said the earth was doing this by itself, but it's also doing this around the sun. What is it doing? It is, of course, it is rotating. The earth rotates around the sun. So you could say the earth also rotates because it moves around the center. The center is the sun. The earth is moving around the center, so it's rotating around the sun, but it also rotates on its axis. Okay, seven, the boy can beep his uncle perfectly. 
So here we're looking for a word that's, that means copy, right? Uh, maybe his uncle has a certain way of talking. Hello, kids. How are you doing today? You know, maybe a, a funny way of talking. And the boy can copy that perfectly. Sometimes you, people do that. Maybe your friends can copy famous actors or people on television, and they copy them really well. What are they doing? They're imitating those people. They are mimicking those people. So the boy can mimic his uncle perfectly. He can copy his behavior very, very well. Okay, number eight, the president made an beep speech last night. So the president made what kind of speech? What kind of speech can the president make? Something that's respected, something that maybe is important, something that gets a lot of attention. Right there. The president made an impressive speech last night. So that would be that would fit. And of course, and because you have I there. An impressive speech last night. Okay, well that wraps up the vocabulary section of the lesson. Let's take a short break, come back and see how those words are used in the reading passage. Don't go away. Okay, let's go over the reading passage together. Uh, let's start off by reading about the early history of robots. Let's begin here. Many people think of robots as modern machines, but they have been around for a long time. Many early robots were toys. They couldn't do very much, but as time went on, robots began doing some impressive things. Okay, let's take a look at the first sentence here. The first sentence starts off by talking about something that maybe many people think a certain way, but then shows the opposition to that. For example, many people think of robots as modern machines. This part here, this part of the sentence here says, you know, when we think about robots, we think about them as modern machines. They're machines that were made nowadays in modern society. But that's not true. That's what this sentence is saying. It's showing opposition. This is a common thought, maybe a normal way of thinking for many people, but it's saying, no, that's not true. So this is a way that many writers will start their passages. They'll say, many people think this way, but it's not true. Many people think of robots as modern machines, but that's not true. They have been around for a long time. So that part is the opposition, and the opposition is shown by using but. So like I said, this is a common technique writers will use when they want to introduce a subject. They'll say, we normally think of this subject this way, but that's not true. Actually, this is true. So that's an interesting technique that many writers will use. We think of robots as modern machines, but that's not true. They have been around for a very long time. So it's some surprising information. It makes us interested in the topic. And the topic, of course, is robots and the history of robots. So, many early robots were toys. So, robots have been around for a long time, but mostly they have been around as toys. Most of the early robots were just toys they couldn't do very much, right? When we think about robots as modern machines, we think about them building cars, cleaning our houses, uh, going to Mars, uh, doing many different things. But old robots, they couldn't do very much. But as time went on, as time passed, robots began doing some impressive things. So basically this passage is talking about the history or development of robots. Early robots were just toys. They couldn't do very many things, but as time passed, as time went on, robots started doing more and more impressive things. So that kind of sets us up. It gets us ready for the subject, which of course is talking about the history or the development of robots. Let's continue. The first robot was made by a Greek inventor. He built a pigeon that looked real. The bird could even turn. It rotated if you moved a wooden bar. This kind of robot might seem silly to us, but long ago, this was a strange and wonderful thing. Okay, so first of all, we're talking about the history of robots. 
Of course, when we talk about history, we should start with the first. What was the first? If we know, sometimes we don't know. But in this case, we do know. The first robot, the very first robot, was made by a Greek. Those Greeks, they're doing everything, right? <laughs> it's funny. You know, when we trace history, we always go back to the Greeks, right? They were always doing something. Uh, they were the first in many things. The first robot was made by a Greek inventor. That's, but if you think about it, the Greeks, that's a long, long time ago. That's almost like 3,000 years ago. There was a robot 3,000 years ago? That's really impressive. That's amazing. That's surprising. Okay, by a Greek inventor. He, the Greek inventor, he built a pigeon that looked real. It wasn't a real pigeon, but he made a model of a pigeon. I don't know what he used. Maybe he used wood. Maybe he used metal, or I'm not sure, it's 3,000 years ago. What did they have to make pigeons or models out of? But anyway, he built a pigeon, it looked real. The bird could even turn. So his model, his pigeon, could turn, and it seemed to turn by itself. It rotated, right, it rotated, it turned around on the center, it rotated if you moved a wooden bar. So if you have a bar, you could maybe turn it and the pigeon is moving. Now, it seems very simple, of course, to us, right? This kind of robot might seem silly to us, right? Well, that's very ordinary. It's very simple. It's not special. Maybe 3,000 years ago, though, it was special, right? It was unusual, right? Long ago, this was a strange and wonderful thing. It was the first time people never saw something like this before. So a lot of things that we see in our daily lives that we think, oh, that's simple, that's easy. Well, think about it. A long time ago, people didn't uh, feel that way about things. What we think is ordinary or uh, common, think about it. A thousand years ago, two thousand years ago, even a hundred years ago, people would think, wow, that's really strange. Imagine if you showed a computer or your iPad to somebody one hundred years ago. They would think you were from another planet or that you were from the devil or something, you know? They, oh my gosh, it's magic, right? So it's very interesting to think about that. A long time ago, this robot was very impressive to people in ancient Greek society. Nowadays, it seems it seems silly to us, but you know, things change. Okay, next one. In 1515, that's a long time ago, right? That's like 500 years ago. The king of France wanted to see something new and surprising. He's, his workers built him a robot lion. On the outside, it looked like a simple wooden lion. Okay, this is not a picture of the lion. This looks like a picture of the pigeon. Uh, perhaps that's what it was. Okay, but in 1515, 500 years ago, the king of France, he wanted to see something new. He wanted to see something surprising, something that would surprise him so he would be surprised. He wanted to see something new and surprising. Remember, in 1515, they didn't have television. They didn't have the movies. It, it was very difficult to see something new and surprising. So his workers built him a robot lion. A robot lion. That sounds cool, doesn't it? On the outside, it looked like a simple wooden lion. So they built it out of wood. They made a lion out of wood. And it just looked like a simple wooden lion. It didn't look like anything special. So the king was like, okay, it's a lion made out of wood. We've seen that before. How is that surprising? Well, on the inside of the lion, there were round gears, just like a watch. When these gears moved, the lion could walk around. It could even raise its paw. Now that is interesting, especially 500 years ago, right? So on the inside, on the outside, it looked like a wooden lion. But on the inside of the lion, there were round gears. Remember the gears were wheels with teeth just like a watch, just like on the inside of a watch. And if you turned those gears, if you made those gears move, when these gears moved, the lion could walk, right? The lion could walk. That's pretty neat. And it could even raise its paw. So it could raise its paw like that. Now that's kind of scary, 
right? So the king's looking at a, at a wooden lion. On the outside, it just looks like a simple wooden lion. On the inside are gears, and when the workers turn those gears, the lion seemed to walk by itself and raise its paw. That was surprising. I'm sure the king was very surprised. But that's not it. There's more. After a few steps, the lion's chest would open. Inside of his chest were lilies. The king was very pleased. Okay, so that's pretty amazing when you think about it right there. Um, the lion, the gears on the inside of the lion would move. The lion would seem to be walking and raise its paw. But after a few steps, this means after it took a few steps, after it took a few steps, the lion's chest would open up, the wooden doors would open, and inside were lilies, the flowers. Remember, lilies are flowers, impressive flowers. So the king was very pleased. He was pleased. He was feeling happy. He was very happy. Wow, it's new. It's wonderful. Very good job, right? The king was pleased. Don't say the king was pleasing. No, the lion was pleasing. The king was pleased. Okay, so be careful the ing and ed endings again. So the king was very pleased. The king was very happy to see this old wooden robot, or the, uh, old for us, but new for him, this new wooden robot. Okay, in the 1700s, okay, so 200 years after the king of France saw his wooden lion, but still 300 years ago for us, in the 1700s, robots started to look more like people. Really? 300 years ago, robots were starting to look like people? That's interesting. Remember the beginning of this passage, it said people think about robots as a modern invention, but even 300 years ago, they started to look like people. Let's read on. A Swiss clockmaker built a robot doll that looked like a little boy. The doll had a pen in its hand and could write. It couldn't write anything on its own, though. So that's very interesting. A Swiss clockmaker. Of course, clockmakers uh, back then, they didn't really have watches. Watches were not common back 300 years ago. You know, clocks, you know, people didn't wear clocks on their wrist. Clocks were on the wall. And watches weren't too common. Uh, there, there were pocket watches, of course, but they were, they were for rich people. They weren't too common. But a Swiss clockmaker built a robot doll that looked like a little boy because they started to look more like people. This robot looked like a little boy. The doll had a pen in its hand. So the clockmaker would put a pen in the doll's hand and the doll could write. However, it couldn't write anything on its own though. Did you ever see the movie? The movie was called Hugo. It was a very good movie. I think Steven Spielberg was the director. I, th I think so, I'm pretty sure. But it was very similar to that. This movie featured a doll that was exactly like this. It was a doll that they put the pen in the hand and then they turned a wheel and it turned the gears inside the doll and whatever one person was writing, let's say I was writing it and the things, uh, the, the doll was attached to my hand, I would write something, the doll would copy exactly what I was writing. It was pretty impressive. So it could copy the movements of somebody else. And that's, that was the, uh, uh, that robot was featured in Hugo, but that's what it could do. Now, again, today we think, well, that's not so special, but a long time ago, people thought that was special. Imagine, though, if you hid the person who was writing and you just saw the doll. You just showed the doll writing to an audience. The audience would be like, oh my gosh, how is this doll writing something? So it was very impressive back in that time. So, but of course, it couldn't write anything on its own. It had to have a person start to write so the doll could copy. Okay, it needed the help of a person. We just said that. The clockmaker put a machine on his arm and wrote a message. The machine in the doll would mimic or copy the way the clockmaker's hand moved. The doll could write the same message as the clockmaker. So basically, that's what I said. It's very similar to that movie Hugo, right? The doll, the robot boy, needed the help of a person the clockmaker put a machine on his arm, right? The machine on his arm was connected to the doll. And the clockmaker would write a message. So the clockmaker, one, 
he put a machine on his arm, and two, whoops, two, let's get that back, okay, two, he wrote a message. So, clockmaker one put a machine on his arm, and two, he wrote a message. So he did two things. The machine in the doll would mimic, mimic, remember, means imitate or copy the way the clockmaker's hand moved. So the clockmaker was behaving in a certain way, the doll would behave in exactly the same way. It would imitate the clockmaker, mimic the clockmaker. The doll could write the same message as the clockmaker. So the same mess, whoa, the same message, okay? So the doll could write the same message as the clockmaker. And like I said before, that could be very impressive, especially if the clockmaker hid himself from the view of the other people who are looking at the doll. That could be very impressive. Okay, robots have changed a lot over the years. They can do much more difficult jobs now. Who knows what they might do in the future? Okay, so we're talking about the development of robots, right? They have changed a lot. They really have changed a lot. They're not simple wooden lions or, or just dolls that could write, right? Nowadays, especially with electricity, robots can do a lot of different things. They can do much more difficult jobs like making cars or going around the floor of your house and, and vacuuming up the dirt, right? Who knows what they might do in the future, right? And this is something that we're going to see a lot in these lessons when we're talking about robots or new technology. Who knows what they're going to do in the future? The future is very interesting, especially when we think about advancements in machines and computers, and well, computers are machines, but in advances in technology. I mean, what will life be like in 10 years or 20 years? It's who knows? Who knows what robots can do? That's another interesting area to think about. Okay, let's go over the reading comprehension. This story is about what? So what is this story talking about? Is this story talking about pigeons? Is it talking about clockmakers? Oh, let's see what it is. We have the choices here. A, the history of clocks. B, bird robots. C, the history of robots. And D, clockmakers. Well, it's not about clockmakers. And it's not about bird robots. And it's not about the history of clocks. What we're talking about here is the history of robots. Because that's what this whole passage is talking about. We start off with a question, or not a question, but kind of like a surprising idea. That many people, it's ordinary to think of robots as modern inventions, but actually they've been around for thousands of years. Going all the way back to the Greek inventor, we saw the example of the Greek inventor. Then we saw the example of the King of France in 1515. Then we saw the example of the clockmaker in the 1700s. All of these things have to do with the history of robots, how robots have changed over the years. Okay, So not clocks, not bird robots. Bird robots was just one example. That was the earliest example. It was just part of the story. And clockmakers, that was another example. The whole passage was about the history of robots. So this story is about the history of robots. Number two, one early robot was a wooden lion that could do what? Remember, that wooden lion that was made for the king of France could do several things, right? It could walk and run, A, B, raise its paw, C, raise its head, D, grow lilies. Well, let's look at these. It could walk and run. It said it could take some steps. It didn't say it could run, right? So that's not right. B, it could raise its paw. That was the second thing it could do, right? They said when they turned the gears, the lion could walk. It could even raise its paw. So B is the answer. It could raise its head. The passage didn't say anything about the lion raising its head, so that's not right. And finally, grow lilies. Now, don't be confused. The lion wasn't growing lilies. The lion just showed the lilies, right? It opened the doors and you could see the lilies. But it didn't plant the seeds and water them and wait till the lilies grew. It didn't grow the lilies. It just showed the lilies. So the right answer is B. One early robot was a wooden lion that could raise its paw. Okay, next one. Three, in the 1700s, a beep was built by a Swiss clockmaker. 
So what was built by the Swiss clockmaker? And the Swiss clockmaker was a third example, right? What did the Swiss clockmaker build? Did the Swiss clockmaker build a little boy that could write? <laughs> no, it, he didn't build a boy, right? This is not the story of Pinocchio, <laughs> right? And you can't really build a human person. You can't build a human being, so that's not right. He didn't build a little boy. That would be very strange. Nobody's ever done that. B, he built a doll that could write without help. Now, be careful. A doll that could write without help. Could the doll write on its own? No, the passage specifically said that it needed the help of another person to be able to write. So it could not write without help. It needed help. It needed help to write. So B is not right. He built a doll that could mimic the way the clockmaker's hand moved. Okay. It could mimic, it could copy the way the clockmaker's hand moved. Remember, the clockmaker did two things. One, he put a machine on his arm, and then he wrote something down. And that machine was connected to the doll. The doll was copying or mimicking the way the clockmaker's hand moved so it could write the same thing. So C is the answer. That's true. D, a doll that could mimic the way the clockmaker spoke. So the doll could speak? No, that technology was not invented yet. 300 years ago, they did not have the technology to make sound from, a, from an object. So that's not right. So D is incorrect. Okay, let's move on to number four. Modern robots can do many difficult jobs, are mostly toys for fun, are smarter than people. D, look more like people. Which is the right answer? I hope you got it as I said it. Of course, it's A. Modern robots can do many difficult jobs. In the passage, they were talking about robots a long time ago just did really simple things, right? And they weren't very practical. They weren't very useful, right? They just entertained people. But nowadays, robots, it said, can do many difficult jobs. It, they, robots today can do a lot of different things. Okay, so that's true. It's not like modern robots are mostly toys for fun. No, that's not true. Modern robots are mostly used in factories to build things. So that's not true. See, modern robots are smarter than people. The passage didn't say anything about robots being smarter than people. And we hope that robots aren't smarter than people. That would not be good, probably. <laughs> okay, D. Uh, modern robots look more like people. Um, no, it didn't say that. It did say that in the 1700s, uh, robots were starting to resemble people, but that was in the 1700s. It didn't say anything about modern robots looking more like people. It did not say that. What it did say is that modern robots can do many difficult jobs. And that was showing the contrast to earlier robots that only did really simple things and that really just entertained other people. Okay, so we've learned a lot about robots in this lesson. We've learned that the first robot, the very first robot, was made by a Greek inventor. Those Greeks, right? They did everything. <laughs> okay, the Greek inventor, that means at least, you know, 3,000 years ago. So it's very interesting to think about that. Robots aren't just a modern invention. Human beings have been thinking about robots for thousands of years, okay? But it's just our technology, what we can do to, to make those robots uh, better and more practical and, and uh, can do more jobs for us. Okay, so anyway, the first robot was made by a Greek inventor. Very interesting. In 1515, the French king's workers built him a robot lion. So 500 years ago, there was a robot lion and it was built for the king of France to amuse and to surprise him. Okay, and in 1700s, in the 1700s, robots started to look more like people, right? We saw the example of the clockmaker who built a doll that looked like a young boy and that could copy the clockmaker's motions to write. So, what, we, what can we tell from these different facts? We can tell that robots have changed a lot over the years. And of course, we're talking about thousands of years robots have changed a lot. And when we think about modern robots, even though the passage didn't talk about it, we know a little bit about modern robots from movies and from, uh, from
from uh, uh, the internet and from studying about robots and from watching the news as well, we can see that robots have changed a lot over the years. Okay, and of course the idea there that was also in the passage is how will robots change in the future, right? 10 years from now, 20 years from now, what will robots look like? What will they be able to do? It's an interesting future ahead of us. Okay, well we'll see you guys next time. Take care.